All right, this will be our second screencast um, in our series of screencasts uh, discussing property changes upon mixing and partial molar properties of ideal gases. So in this screencast, we'll look at um, partial molar enthalpy and internal energy. Okay, and so just to kind of, you know, recap uh, from the last screencast, because it's going to be useful and important here, is we found that the partial molar volume of species I in an ideal gas mixture is just equal to the molar volume. In our last screencast, we also uh, introduced the concept of uh, partial pressure, okay? And so again, the idea was if I had, um, say, an ideal gas mixture in which I had these solid black molecules um, and then these non-filled molecules, okay? The idea would be is, um, well, pressure, okay? So pressure times V total, okay, is equal to NRT so that P is equal to nRT over V total, okay? Where if this were, say, a binary system, okay, N, I could just say is N1 plus N2 times RT over V total, okay? So the idea would be is that's my total pressure, okay? What partial pressure is, okay? And remember, in an ideal gas, our molecules don't interact and they don't take up space, right? In an ideal gas, molecules don't interact and they don't take up space. So the idea of a partial pressure was if I let the solid black molecules be, be, yeah, be component one and these unfilled ones be component two, as if I could magically delete all of my component two molecules, okay, the partial pressure, okay, due to component one, okay, or I'm just going to write, you know, in terms of species I, would just be the moles of species I, right, whatever is left, times RT over V total, right, I'm going to delete the molecules of all of my other species keeping the total volume fixed. So PI would be the pressure the component I would exert if all the other molecules were deleted, right? So PI is just equal to NI uh, times RT over V total, okay? Cool, okay? And then P, okay, my total pressure is just going to be the sum of my partial pressures, okay? which would be RT over V total times, um, in theory, sum over I uh, and I, right? Because RT over V total is going to be the same, and then I would just sum over, you know, the moles of, of all species, right? So it should make sense, right? Okay, uh, cool, okay? So that is uh, partial pressure, okay? Then, you know, the only thing uh, I'll point out is if I were to look at this equation, right? So if PI is equal to NI RT over V total, and then P is just the sum of uh, the partial pressures of all my species. Okay, so the last relationship that we'll take advantage of here, okay, is um, I think in the notes I use Y to designate mole fraction, is that PI, okay, I can write as being YI times P, okay, so this would be say, ni over n times p, okay? So uh, where exactly does this come from, or, or what is this saying, right? Well, pi, okay, is just ni times rt over v total, okay? So pi is just ni times rt over v total, okay? p is equal to n times rt over v V total, okay. So if I were to take the ratio of the two, okay, pi over p then is just, you know, this term is constant. It's just equal to ni over n, which is y mole fraction, okay. So commonly we say that pi right is equivalent to yi times p, right. And again, this plays into, you know, um, p is just the sum over. Um, the sum of your, your PIs. All right? Cool. Okay. All right. And so why I go and I, you know, show this is what we're going to do to, or what we'll use to calculate uh, the partial molar properties of um, our, all of our other partial molar properties besides molar volume for an ideal gas is we're going to use something called the Gibbs theorem. Okay. And so what is the Gibbs theorem? Okay. So now in an ideal gas, we assume that my, or our molecules don't interact and don't take up space. We don't assume, right, in an ideal gas, molecules don't interact and they don't take up space. 
So what the Gibbs's theorem is, is it says that uh, the partial molar property, so for other than molar volume, uh, our partial molar properties of an ideal gas are equivalent to uh, pure component molar values at the same temperature uh, and partial pressure uh, PI. Okay? And so the idea is, is that in an ideal gas mixture, our molecules don't interact. Okay? And so, okay, so first let me write down the Gibbs theorem and let's you know, say what this conceptually means. Okay? So the Gibbs's theorem state, okay, so Gibbs's theorem, uh, Gibbs theorem, tells us then essentially that F bar I, the partial molar property of component I in my ideal gas mixture, and so that'd be at say some TP, and I'll use YI, okay, for compositions here, is equivalent to pure component value at the same T, but partial pressure YI or PI, okay, and so PI I could equivalently say is T times T comma YI times P, okay. So the Gibbs's theorem tells us that our partial molar property of component I in an ideal gas mixture is equivalent to its pure component value at the same T, but partial pressure PI, okay. And so to make sense of this, so in an ideal gas, molecules don't interact, they don't take up space. So if I again had this, you know, binary mixture of, you know, component one, my solid filled molecules, and component two, my hollow molecules, okay, what is partial pressure? Well, partial pressure is the idea of, you know, if I could delete all of my molecules of component two, right, keep the total volume the same, that's the pressure that would be exerted by component one, right, or component I. So in an ideal gas mixture in which molecules don't interact and don't take up space, then the idea is, is we've always said partial molar properties are essentially the effective value in our mixture. Well, the effective value in our mixture is that that would be in, you know, a system of, say, pure component I, okay, at the same temperature, uh, but rather than being at, you know, this pressure, it'd be at partial pressure or pressure equivalent to PI, right, at the corresponding partial pressure. Uh, you know, the pressure that just that component would exert if everything else were delimited, deleted or eliminated, all right? So, again, partial pressure is kind of this idea of, I have this binary system, say here, uh, at a given total volume. If I can magically delete, say, component two, okay, it'd be the pressure that would be exerted just by component one in that same total volume. And so what the Gibbs's theorem then tells us is that, okay, in my ideal gas mixture in which molecules don't interact and don't take up space, my partial molar property of component I in that mixture, so the effective value of component I in that mixture, is going to be equivalent to its pure component value at the same temperature, but partial pressure PI. So again, this is the pressure that just component I would exert if everything else were deleted, right? Or equivalently T comma, you know, partial pressure I can write as YI times P, okay? And, you know, the fact that molecule in an ideal gas molecules don't interact and don't take up space, right? This should hopefully make sense, okay? And so this is going to apply to everything except molar volume, right? Molar volume we just worked out in the last set of notes. Okay. All right. So, what does this mean? Well, let's think about um, enthalpy. Okay. Okay. So, you should recall from chapter five, right, that we found that for an ideal gas, DH was just CP ideal gas DT, and we said the significance of this was for an ideal gas, then enthalpy is independent of pressure. It is only a function of temperature. Right. We showed that. Enthalpy is only a function of T. Okay, um, so yeah. So what this means then is, if I apply the Gibbs's theorem or Gibbs's theorem, Gibbs would tell us that H bar I in an ideal gas mixture, okay, at a given T P and composition Y I, is just equal to H I ideal gas pure component value at the same temperature. Okay, but uh, pressure equal to its partial pressure PI. Okay, well, um, enthalpy of an ideal gas is independent of pressure, right? So, you know, the pressure doesn't matter. It's only a function of T, right? So I could equivalently say that HI uh, of my ideal gas, right, is just say as a function of T, um, or you know, you could plug in any pressure of interest, right? No matter what the pressure, uh, as long as the temperature is the same. Um, the enthalpy of component I in that ideal gas mixture is, is the same. Okay, cool. Okay, so this is what Gibbs's theorem tells us. Okay, 
So the partial molar enthalpy of component I in an ideal gas mixture is just equal to its pure component value. Okay. So how are we going to use that? Well, so if I want to look at delta H of mixing, okay, so delta H of mixing would be equal to H minus sum over I, YI, HI, all right, pure component values. All right, so remember we're mixing at constant temperature and pressure. So H I can replace as sum over I, um, I'm using Y composition, YI, YI <laughs> times H bar I minus sum over I, YI, HI, okay, or equivalently then delta H of mixing is equivalent to sum over I, um, YI times H bar I minus HI. Okay, so now the key here is when we mix, right, we mix at constant temperature and pressure. Okay, we mix at constant temperature and pressure. So if I just look at this term, okay, HI minus HI, okay, so what this corresponds to is this would be HI at TP in composition YI minus HI at T and P. Okay. Well, Gibbs' theorem would tell us that this is equivalent to HI at T and PI minus then HI at T and P. Well, enthalpy of an ideal gas is only a function of temperature. It's independent of pressure. Okay, And so since these two states are at the same T, or these both correspond to a state at the same T, then their difference is just zero. Okay, And so what we show then, or what we find, is that delta H of mixing for an ideal gas is just equal to zero. Okay, Delta H of mixing for an ideal gas is zero. Right, So uh, an ideal gas is athermal. Okay, And this result should make sense. Okay, So if I have an ideal gas in which molecules don't interact and don't take up space, um, then I would expect that no heat would be, you know, liberated or absorbed by that system upon mixing, right? I would expect that delta H of mixing uh, would be zero. So using the Gibbs' theorem, we just showed or proved for an ideal gas, delta H of mixing is always uh, zero, right? And then Gibbs' theorem would tell us that uh, partial molar enthalpy of component I in an ideal gas mixture is molar volume at the same, molar value, pure component molar value at the same temperature, partial pressure PI, uh, but for an ideal gas, um, Enthalpy is independent of pressure, right? It's only a function of T. Okay, cool. In terms of internal energy, essentially we get the same thing. Okay, so as far as internal energy is concerned, internal energy, so internal energy is one and the same. So key is back from chapter five. Remember that du of an ideal gas was just equal to Cv. DT, we show that internal energy was also only a function of temperature, it was independent of pressure, okay, um, so that, say, the partial molar internal energy of component I in an ideal gas mixture at TP and YI is just equal to pure molar value at the same temperature, the same partial pressure PI, where U is independent of um, P, all right, so that's just as well equivalent to the value at the same temperature, but pressure P. Okay, so this is what the Gibbs' theorem tells us. Okay, and so then delta U of mixing, okay, if I skip a couple steps from up above, right, that's sum over I, U bar I minus UI, um, uh, XI, right, sum over I. Uh, and I got to use Y, right? So again, I'm just skipping ahead to here, okay? But it's uh, YI, okay? So I'm using Y for compositions. And if I were to look at this term, U bar I minus UI, right? It's the same thing. U is independent of pressure, right? I mix at constant pressure, constant pressure and temperature. Uh, and so that's going to be zero for an ideal gas, okay? So we would get that delta U of mixing. delta U of mixing for an ideal gas is zero.
Cool. Okay, the same is not going to be true uh, for entropy and molar Gibbs free energy, but we will tackle those next.